Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to the Pax Britannica mod for Hearts of Iron Form. Your host, Mr. United Commonwealth of America Lover, but Brim Buzz the Sterling Zone. Um, well, an excellent proposal. Better consumer goods, better factory output, and better consumer a civilian factory construction speed. And this 25 political power, or an exceptional proposal. We lose 50 political power, and we refuse. Well, honestly, I have no idea which way we want to go, so. Mm, we're liberals right now. Eh, fighting for equality. Well, I was looking at our focus tree here, and it says, has not been victorious in the Imperial Civil War. Inspector of Lady Economy has not been victorious in the Imperial Civil War. It sounds like we shouldn't probably go to have a civil war with them, but I kind of want a civil war. A liberal civil war. Revive the steel belt. Increase in literacy. Classrooms with Phil. We think of children across the country ready to learn. A policy has greatly increased literacy nationwide. Programs in poverty-stricken areas have helped many adults in rural areas go from illiterate to reading at an acceptable level. It's increased in national brain power help to improve our industrial and economic base as more of the population can make better decisions and learn at a faster rate. Our current literacy rate will improve. Writing is a cornerstone of this civilization. Because I'm just looking at all this of America for the workers, against poverty, state socialists, of course. Um, Triumph of the common folk, huh? Like kleptocrats, uh, intimidate the EIEC, lunch of the board of directors, so. By the discrepancy. Uh, engineer social America. Well, I kind of want to go with an excellent proposal. Yeah, let's go there. Why not? Screw it. Why not? Just because we can. Because right now we're doing renovate the Eastern Seaboard. Uh, I heard this one earlier. I might have. I might not have. The East Coast of America has always been a hub of economic activity, but the recent efforts have focused on expanding industry in the region. From the bustling cities of New York and Boston to the smaller towns along the coast, new factories and manufacturing centers are popping up all over. These efforts are aimed at creating more jobs for workers and providing a boost to the local economy. Construction of new infrastructure such as highways, bridges, and rail lines is also underway to help connect the East Coast with other parts of the country and facilitate the movement of goods and people. I think I read that one. Bright months for a bright future. The United Commonwealth is committed to promoting education and research in its universities, recognizing that an educated populace is crucial to the growth and success of the nation. To achieve this goal, the government has increased research funding for universities and provided greater support for literacy programs. Because why not? Oopsie. Ah, here we go. Nice. And we have a cup of tea here, too. Give us nice and toasty. Well, I guess we might as well. It's only 70, which is not bad. And what do we have here? Oh. Rebel Strike, Imperial Coalition, they're neutral. Imperial Attention is 38%. We're pretty much mostly aligned with us, which is pretty cool. Domestic Policy, we're doing okay. The Warhawks are just empowered. The Freemen support us. The Southern support us for now. Mega Corporation supports us. So do the trade unions. Nicaraguan stuff. I don't know. It seems kind of okay. Current military progress is 12%. Hmm. You need to do a lot of focuses here. This is just feels like a big old drain on us. We can do that. But at least does. So. Yeah. Oh well. It is what it is. I'll probably play the United Commonwealth of America several different times. But whatever. And what else do we got here? Because I just want to have the civil war between us and. Uh, the big old. Britain. So. Um, expand the fleet. It's not bad. Pay for fair work, fair trade. More stability would be pretty nice. <laughs> The following mega corps will be permanently removed. Dolbear, Dolbear Bol, Bell, Ford Motor Company, United Standard Oil Company. Because of the immense size and global importance of the EIEC, they should be, remain intact. For, for mega corporations will decrease, huh? And the pursuit of economic equality and social justice, policymakers long sought ways to ensure that workers receive fair compensation for their labor. One strategy that has gained traction is the establishment of a fair wage policy. The policy aims to guarantee that workers are paid a living wage that covers the basic needs of a family, such as food, housing, health care, and education. It's a little ahead of time, but whatever. We got five research slots. Infantry. What else we got around here? Organization. I will not hurt organization. Melange. Sure. Oh, why not? I'm still making some carriers. Which is fine. We're train, 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 train. We've got basically no fuel. Um. Nothing we really could do down there yet. Power of the Warhawks Southerners. You know, more stability it lowers uh, Freeman's support for, for us. 20% radicalized, whatever. We need more manpower, definitely, though. Crush corporate America. Address a Southern issue. Oh. 
Well, we could try this. Southern population become more radicalized. Support for liberal decrees. In any kind, what the issue of segregation policies in the American South is a present concern. The government is actively working to address the problem, recognizing that segregation is a violation of basic human rights. Replace the Crittenden compromise, Crittenden consolidated, more political, political power, more stability, which would be pretty nice. Replace racial segregation with a neutral stance, plus 40% more non core manpower. Lux of South decisions. And, no oh boy. Let's see what happens. If we end up in a civil war, well, that's what makes it fun, right? Right, right. Absolutely. Air stuff, 33. Eh. Yeah. Cannons, cannons, heavy machine guns. Some cannons eventually, too. That'd be nice. Mm -hmm. There you go. Fuel a refining. Come on, let's go ahead and do that, too. Overstep for boundaries. Less resistance. Friends with benefits. <clears throat> the Freedmen's Defense Militia may be dubiously legal, but they're a kind of dubiously legal group we can work with. Their help will be integral in keeping the Commonwealth combat the rampant racism and the slavery in the South. Cool. Yeah, we're just trying to get these planes done so we can actually have them on our carriers and whatnot, so that'd be pretty nice overall. Um, highlight Rebel Atrocities. Managing the military. American Orbit Program, huh? What else we got around here? Um... More consumption. Less resistance growth people, less army XP gain. Eh. Pat pills. Friends of benefits. Because here we have New Dexia as of course state. Free states. Oh. Integrated. Well. Yeah. Proved radar. This is pretty good too. Friends of benefits over tapper boundaries. By deliberately antagonizing the southern populist bloc, we can gain leverage that would allow us to further our political goals in the south. Toxic corruption, oh boy. Who is to spread that local officials? Are accepting large amounts of money to turn a blind eye in regards to southern mobilization and the raising of state funded militias? We have a little power in being doing so that likely escalate the situation so it stands the south can only get stronger and more corrupt. Can anyone just calm down? Local autonomy, more uh, daily compliance, please. That'd be very nice. Can I do that one because you can. So, Southerners do not support us. These guys support us. They're kind of radicalized now. They're not radicalized, but they kind of are. Truth be told. Oh. Violent riots, oh boy. The author's pristine blue uniform added little in the ensuing battle for the city roads. A war undeclared, but very much active between the local authorities and the white civilian population. Racial slurs remain ran rampant, um, ran rampant, and armed showdowns occurred in approximately five minute intervals. The south of this moment turned to accessible degeneracy as frequent confrontations between other races, mainly between black and white, turned violent. Those that are not quieted, so did the riots. But New Day would bring new festivity, festivities. Can we just calm down? We don't know. Where would the fun be in that? Have EMGs, nice. Hong Kong Authority, 20%. Docs corruption again. Alright. Friends and benefits. Overstep boundaries. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Racial tensions in the southern states have always been uneasy. Creating not only a physical divide between North and South, but a political one as well. The North is seen by much of the world as a bastion of democracy, freedom, and progress, and the South is a rural backwater with rather outdated and barbaric traditions and customs. The rivalries eventually reached its boiling point, and there's now talk of a Southern uprising. Must act on this issue, or else we a sec on Earth. We're limited time to prepare for what's coming. Civil unrest. Oh. 37, huh? It's only time to see the South proclaiming independence, but while the clock ticks down, we have other pressing matters to attend to. Riots, corruption, and racial tensions are being birthed in this moment of strife. We must, at the very least, attempt to control the situation and face intervention from our fathers in Britain. Oh. This is in 11 days. After 15 days, the United Kingdom might just become a little less civilized. Southern Rebellion. For far too long, we've been ignored by the suits in Philadelphia. 
We openly spit in our face and sold us whenever the darn well please, but we have had enough of it. No longer will traditions, morals, and beliefs be hampered on by administrations still follow us. So I'll call on your brothers, rise, rise up into Dixie Lamb. Oh, appreciate so. Spend 100 political power. Approved version of the martial law occupation. I love the heat. Southern province has been given preferential treatment for far too long and sounded really pressed for luck. Increasing compliance in Dixie <clears throat> no longer increases resistance. Well, a local garrison has just responded to the head of the military affairs, saying that a raid from the ragtag militia group has just occurred. Look at this. Overwhelmed, the garrison instead of giving up arms with little resistance. In fact, it said that a large proportion of soldiers suspected of the militia's cause. Now they grow stronger size. Can everyone just calm down, please? That'd be great. Please, just, just, just calm down, y'all. See what I can do, but you never know. Well, we, we, it's, it's not coolers. Right? I mean, there, there are cores. No, no, they're colony states. We don't get compliance on them. Um, I'm not sure what we're supposed to be able to do then. Basic armor cars. Weapon rate. Weapons rated. Auto max. Oh, yes. I like me the auto max. But already is pretty good too. Neutral Victoria, huh? Why not? Southern agitation. Free movement population become radicalized. When selected, agitation from the southern states and free movement be temporarily suppressed. Ah, I have to get more and more radicalized. Support is 100%. Yeah, I'll radicalize them, why not? There you go, cannons. Violent riots. Oh boy. Things are going to come to a head very soon. Very, very soon. Twenty percent modernized. Nice. Seventy-five percent radicalized. Very cool. 20% does it go up to what percentage? 45%, that's not bad. Not bad at all. There's still a British line, but whatever. Stop for time, huh? Because right now, this is compliance and resistance. Like, it is 1936 as well, so. Crush corporate America. Mm, expand the fleet. It's in Halsey. It's not bad. But let's use some more army stuff, maybe. United Arms Doctrine. Probably expand industry in New England. Expansion of military industry in New England will bring significant economic benefits to the region, uh, creating thousands of new jobs and driving innovation and growth in related industries such as software development and material science. At the same time, will strengthen the United States or <clears throat> the United Commonwealth's military capabilities, and enhance its ability to respond to threats and challenges in the years to come. I mean, at this point, I don't know what else to do. Docks of corruption. Whatever. Propose a petition of the West Indies? New Imperial Pound, huh? That's not bad. Keep that political power because we can. Why not? For what union membership, huh? Oh, violent riots, of course. Pretty normal. 
else we got around here? British African Authority. Sure, why not? Forty percent tension. Stall for time. Oh, racial street brawl. A lone uh, laundromat located in predominantly white suburb lay victim to a bloody beating today. Local reports said that a young African American entered the laundromat to do business when a gang of masked individuals, assumed to be stalking the boy, jumped him and dragged him into the middle of the road, where they, quote unquote, beat the effing crap out of him, said by the locals president of the time. Apparently, a few minutes later, the beating turned into an ugly confrontation between the black and white local population and the street brawl followed suit. The young boy is now as dead as a result of the beating. Can anyone just calm down? So, can we just have the Civil War at this point? Let us have it, let's get through it, and then, well, we'll be good. That's how it works, right? Forward percent. They're not influential. I'm gonna do it anyways. Nice. Rare metal synthesis, huh? It's not bad. Well, we're in for its Atlantic Pond Policy. The Atlantic Pond Policy is seen as a critical part of the Commonwealth's defense strategy, and with the Atlantic Ocean being a about a gateway for global trade and a key strategic location. The expansion of the naval force is expected to enhance the Commonwealth's ability to project power and protect its interests in the region. Southern agitation, huh? Forty percent, is that it? Well, alright. Um, static defense, we could, but let's do United Arms Doctrine. United Commonwealth Military is planning to focus on a doctrine of combined arms, which emphasizes the integration of uh, different combat arms into the unified force of the battlefield. The military is aiming to create a more effective and efficient fighting force by combining infantry, armor, artillery, and air power. This doctrine requires sense of training, coordination, and cooperation between different branches of the military. Flamethrower teams. That seems kind of cool. Um, shock jockeys? That seems really cool too. 25 organization. Oh, Panzer Hounds. Armor trains? Sure, oh, why not? Violent rats. Can everyone just calm down? Nah, we have no stability. Who needed stability? You know? Who needed it? Uh, Warhawks are empowered. France walks into breast. Oh boy. A Dixie uprising. The garrison in Savannah stopped responding at 9 o'clock today. The most recent broadcast from yesterday spoke of the rising unrest and the near collapse of authorities hold on the city. Soon the less that northern aid arrives, the garrison likely to affect the SFA, the or Free States Alliance, or FSA. Yeah. Uh, the SFA remains a large political body against northern rule in the south. Led by the southern landowners, it's likely the worst had just begun and only continued from this point on. Our military has already begun to respond by mobilizing for preparation for the inevitable civil wars. Gunshots can already be heard in the most major southern cities. Well, I we should probably stop training then. You got anything here for us? Cool. May the greatest Americans win. I wish I was in the land of cotton. They have no playable content. Well, darn it. You have some time and... There we go. Cool. Yeah, you know it too. This is... odd. But okay. Uh, I'll have you four, like, focus on... Uh, you guys, you guys focus on this. You guys do this. This is a weird Free States Alliance. Weird type of deal, I'm gonna not gonna lie. I got some vampire back, that's pretty good. Tay house, yeah. So, kind of generic Richard Russell. Like they said, no focus tree. Do we need visions? 
I got the 52. Dick's Rebellion. Reports in the Southern Commonwealth speak of a second Southern uprising against the United, United Against Administration's recent attempts to end racial segregation. For another terms, as themselves as the Free States Alliance, have proclaimed the state independence from Philadelphia and less indirectly from London. Britain's response has been limited similar to that of the UC. Hoping to end the rebellion and restore order to the nation, the whole world once again watches the Commonwealth tear itself apart and hopefully pull itself back together once again. America remains invited, but what else is new? Oh, you guys are here doing that. Um, there we go. Nice. Notice we got some sort of action here. We all were smart to go down there, but Adelaide. Nice. No, we're just killing ourselves. We're doing all right, though. After that, get to Richmond. Armored cap shells. Nice, nice, nice. Going to do that too, just in case. Anything else we can really change here too much? Technical teams and whatnot. Infantry attack and defense. Yeah, I'll grab that one. Why not? There you go. Very nice. Yeah, another carrier. Look at that. No oh boy, y'all definitely need some. Uh... I wonder where they go. 14 divisions. Holy crap. That's a lot of guys, man. Now we're slowly winning every, literally all over the place, so. Lost almost 100,000. That ain't bad, man. Look at that map part we got, though. That's pretty nice. Oof. Jim Williams. Calling it Hicks Hodges. Hey, the Austin Division's there. Nice. Florida's falling apart. Very good. Army speed's looking pretty decent, too. South is tamed. Once again, troops march across southern lands in the names of the freedom. Once again, so many died out of the hands of brothers, and once again, we are divided. A recurring curse. Place on us by God, it seems, one that will never end and is doomed to repeat itself, unlike one brother can, until one brother can finally create a wound so damaging that healing will take a millennium. And even then, I doubt we will be united. Let's hope that never happens again. Oh, okay. South Fit, Falls. Or has been restored. That's all it took. Literally all it took. Reverse any policy. The government will implement policies that discourage the teaching of native languages in educational settings. It's not, but it's been met with uh, opposition from indigenous communities. You view the preservation of the languages as a crucial aspect of the cultural identity. However, proponents of the policy argue that promoting English as a primary language will lead to better integration of the indigenous individuals in a mainstream society will improve economic opportunities. Despite the controversy surrounding the issue, the government has continued to implement these policies, further exacerbating tensions between the indigenous communities and the wider society. Well, is there any point even looking into this anymore? I like the civvies. It's neutral, huh? I'm gonna do that one and it's fine for now. Yeah, we're gonna start focusing a lot more on ooh, automats. Um, honestly, yeah. That's oh, infrastructure. Oh, uh, we need millies. Increasing literacy. Look at that. Yay. Indian language schools in recent years have been a growing recognition of the importance of preserving and promoting the native languages in that Native American communities. Today, the United Commonwealth has introduced new policies that allow for, for native language instruction, a limited academic setting alongside English. 
This has been seen as a positive step towards empowering Native communities and preserving their cultural heritage. While policies still have some limitations, it represents a significant shift in attitude towards indigenous languages. It could have a lasting impact on the linguistic landscape of the country. Limit Seminole Autonomy well, The United Commonwealth Government has been steadily reducing the autonomy of the Seminole Nation. A federally recognized Native American tribe in recent years, the government has implemented policies that strip the tribe of its sovereignty and control over its land and resources. These policies must be continued or actively encouraged to improve Americanization efforts. Absolutely. Nice. Very nice. Now, 37 elections. Well, look at that. <clears throat> now, there's an election in the United Commonwealth. Four major political parties compete for the majority vote. The Federal Unionist Party, which held power for the crisis surrounding the bonus brigade, campaign on platform of fiscal conservatism and return to pre war crisis stability. The progressive Party, led by John Kerner, presented itself as a progressive alternative. They didn't implement social welfare programs and economic reforms. The Workmen's Party is focused on labor rights and proposed policies to protect workers' rights in face of growing industrialization. And lastly, the Social Credit Party, which you advocate for economic and financial reforms, including the use of a monetary system based on social credit. Well, let's keep going with the progressives for now. Since we're here anyways, right? <clears throat> Americanization effort. Oh, look at that. The government's been actively pushed for the use of the English language in schools and other public institutions, as well as advocating for the suppression of native languages and cultures. These policies emphasize assimilation of immigrants and minorities in mainstream American culture. This includes encouraging the adoption of English as a primary language, promoting American values and traditions, and discouraging practices that are considered foreign and non-American. Nice. Very nice. Look at that man part Oh my god. Everyone's killing each other, huh? Pretty normal. Pretty darn normal. Oh, we can't do this one yet. Abolish the Indian Dominion Ship Act. In an effort to consolidate power and centralized governance, the United Commonwealth has abolished the semi-independent Indian, uh, Indian dominions and created new Indian provinces under direct federal control. New provinces are not governed by officials recognized or appointed by central government, and traditional large forms of self-governance have been curtailed. Hey, better carry your hole, huh? Nice, there you go. Overall, not bad. Oh, a heavy ship hole. Oh, that'd be so nice, too. I'm trying to get some of that, some of this, some of that. Fire control it's gonna cost quite a bit. Oh boy! Save that for now. I'll come back to it in a little bit. Nice. <laughs> Even this stuff too, huh? Electronics. Good. Automats, yeah, I definitely want more automats, but we just don't have enough. Redraw Indian majority districts. Parliament has recently announced its decision to withdraw electoral boundaries of the new American Native American provinces. The move aims to promote a more efficient and streamlined political system that better represents the interests of all citizens. The process of redrawing boards will involve a significant consultation with local leaders and community members, as well as consideration of cultural and historical factors. However, some critics argue that this move will dilute the political power of Native American communities, while also others believe it will lead to a fairer representation of greater integration with the broader society. Oh, well, I'll also do it now, anyways. Nice. Industry. Beautiful. Florida. Old Dixie culture. Old Dixie. Who needed stability, right? 50%, huh? There you go, if you really wanted that. Anything else down here? Not too much. Do 
People killing each other. Oh, a Pacheria. Oh, nice, nice job. Span of fleet. The United Commonwealth recognizes the importance of naval power, maintaining global, global security, and promoting economic interests. As such, has embarked on an ambitious program to expand its navy with the goal of becoming one of the world's foremost naval powers. To achieve this, the United Commonwealth has invested heavily in the development of advanced naval and technologies and infrastructure, including new ships, subs, and aircraft carriers. It's also recruited and trained a large number of new sailors, officers, and other naval personnel. The United Commonwealth's expanded navy is expected to play a key role in defending the country's territorial waters, the projecting power and influence abroad, and ensuring that the safety of its citizens and allies. Absolutely. Nutrition, artillery. Well, let's go with that one. Why not? <clears throat> American uh, Marine Corps. The United Commonwealth recently created a military branch called the Mar Royal Marine Corps. Highly trained units designed to operate in any environment from land to sea and can be deployed quickly to respond to threats both, both domestically and abroad. The Royal Marine Corps is made up of elite uh, soldiers who have undergone rigorous training and are equipped with the latest technology and weaponry. Creation of this new military branch demonstrates the United Commonwealth's commitment to maintaining a strong and capable defense force, capable of protecting the Commonwealth's interests both home and abroad. Economic health improves, thanks to our economic policies. We've seen an improvement in the national GDP because of this current health and stability of the economy has improved. Nice. So we're, we're at 50%. Let's see. Okay, sure, why not? New Zealand's not having a good time, are they? Oh! Corsica Falls, alright, expand the fleet. Well, I guess crash corporate America. As the power and wealth of large corporations continue to grow, many Americans have become increasingly concerned about the concentration of economic power and the threat opposed to democracy. In response, the movement has emerged to fight corporate oligarchy and promote a greater economic justice. The movement seeks to hold corporations accountable for their actions, promote worker rights and unionization, and advocate for policies that benefit the majority of Americans rather than just small elite. Stuff nice. Oh, well, there they go. They're having fun. Now I can have one heavy battery there. Aircraft, anti air, secondary batteries. There you go. Better cruisers. Ah, oh, what do we got here? Actually, better twos. Got more than enough naval XP for this. Because of armor four, mediums. There you go. Not bad. They're all American line. It's fifty five percent imperial attention. It's not bad. Keep pressuring them, I guess, you know. Why not? Uh, industry. Proof competing machines, nice. Cool. Pax Revanchista. Germany joins Britain. Wow. Imperial powers, huh? Nice. Good stuff. Oh man, they're not doing. Oh, Germany's not doing well at all. Oh my god. Empire of Yugoslavia, huh?
Germany is very weak. They're fighting a three front war. Turkey revolts. Oh, they definitely ain't looking good for the Germans. At this point, like, neutral and a proclamation. My god. Kingdom of Greece is fine. The Germans really can't hold out, huh? Let me just get rid of it, Nicaragua. Oh, are we down here too? Listen to Halsey. The Prime Minister has been working closely with the Naval, uh, Navy Admiral William Halsey to improve American naval doctrine and expand the United Commonwealth Navy. Halsey, a highly respected and experienced naval commander, has been appointed as head of the Naval War Ministry, where he's working to develop new strategies for naval war from the 20th century. With all these guidance, the United Commonwealth is making significant investments with the new technologies and modernizing his fleet to ensure that it remains one of the most powerful navies in the world. Cool. Is there anything else besides that? Oh, we have stuff down here, a rare metal synthesis. Traditionally, synthetic metals will revolutionize many fields, including military and aerospace technology, as well as infrastructure and manufacturing. The United Commonwealth will become a leader in the production and application of these new materials, driving innovation and progress across the globe. The breakthrough will spark a new era of technological advancement and pave the way for even greater achievements in the future. But I guess, you know, at this point, we must just try to go to war with these guys. But, you know, this is looking not very good for anybody. But, hey, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Right, everybody. We finally, in 1940, was able to pe manage to break through and have a good old time, as we've already taken Paris, as well. I guess the United Dominions of India decided to take Paris and okay, they've been cut off. But we're doing okay. Tons of casualties on both sides. We've suffered over, well, basically 900,000. We've killed off almost 15 million. My god. There are quite a few divisions left, but we're not sure where all the French divisions are at. Looks like there are a couple here. We did sink quite a few with our navy, which is doing okay. Not great, but it's doing okay. But. It's been one heck of a grind, I'm not gonna lie, but we got some comms to go through too, so. Uh, we pretty much did all the focuses that we can do right now. Um, as you see, we're almost pretty much done with the entire uh, tech tree, um, as is right now, but, uh, yeah. So, comms glued, I kinda wanna see you stick with the empires, no one's done that yet, so. Um, even though I have been trying to push for more world tension, so, or, and probably tension is 80%, so. Um, I don't know. Ireland's pretty on board with us. Oh. The French empires, okay. Oh, and Germany's back, look at that. Uh, Northwest Territories, they're almost along with us, which is not enough. Um, African Authority, sure. Germany returns from exile, liberation uh, to death. Cool. I'm gonna guess we can go this way. I guess Italy's on the docket, I suppose. Um, someone says it's Pax Britannica Heart. Someone says early in the video, but would you, would you go through the socialist path? I haven't seen any of the YouTubers play that route. Eventually I will. Someone says a great video. Play any Spear Path with this, and TNO with the second West Russian War mod. Yeah, eventually I will. Ooh. I'll say Tanya. Um, Automex. More, way more 100%. More defense. Do these things even have? Because we don't have that many divisions of them. I love Automat divisions. Recon's not bad. I guess... Well, actually, let's see. Let's see. 100% more is not terrible. 5% more defense. It's not even 0 0.8. So, I think maybe getting more recon would be good. Oh, and we did, we did all the focuses, like I said. Maybe getting more recon would be the deal. Try, that was a beat of the Italians. So it says, oh, good, uh, Prax Britannica has returned. You won't be able to unify North America under the C US UCA, though. Only the Second Continental Army can do that right now. Well, that sucks. I didn't know that, but hey, it's good to know. So it says, can you use a TNO mod called Sony Plus? Yeah, eventually, yeah. Better call Sony. So it says, Pax. And so it says, me seeing Pax Britannica get covered, yeah, boy. So, um, but yeah, overall not bad, and we're doing okay for now. Oh, we're almost out of manpower. Oh, god dang it. Hey, oh, I like these things. Oh my god, I love them. Yeah, where are you at? Oh, the final hour. Oh, the British Empire is at the very moment on the brink of our war with the once greatest ally, now the greatest rival, the United Commonwealth of America. After months, if not years, of increasing imperial tension between the two world powers, it seems diplomacy has once again failed the globe as America and Great Britain. Ready themselves for what's likely to be the defining war of the century. Already militias are being mustered and reports of the first shots of war being heard. Commonwealths uh, that are under intense American economic influence will likely stay with Philly, but for what remains, the rest of the empire remains uncertain. An empire divided itself cannot stand. 
Um. Oh, we can't fight them too. Oh, well, that's the case, whatever. Oh, help. what the heck? Oh, are we no longer the... Okay, so that's interesting. We have League of Nations versus... League of Nations. Oh, we're the Coalition of Independent States. Okay. So we're taking the war of them. Okay, I did not know that. Um, how much actually do we have right now? 100% Arbitral? Sure, why not? Um, so we'll have time. Support stuff was not bad to have. Signal companies would not be bad either. Automax, though, we're working on it. Artillery, or is already maxed out. Rocket artillery, maybe? Interesting. Um, hmm. Ah, British oil has rise up. Okay, well, we're seeing scattered reports of unrest across New England. Several government buildings have been attacked and burned, sending secessionist reporters running. While the northernmost provinces have already been always been a holdout for loyalists, they were never this violent before now. British intelligence is clearly this escalating situation, activating new networks of traders who are willing to sell the Commonwealth to London. With the situation as unstable as it currently is, we can't spare professional troops to pass by the region full. Local police and RMP, RAMP would handle the situation as best they can. Traders hold a darn lot of them. So we lose all these guys. But we're not at war with them yet. They're the League of Nations, while we have... Uh... Well, let's see what happens first. The Bermuda Confrontation. As questions continue across North America, particularly in the Caribbean, where the issues of Bermuda have been risen to prominence again in dramatic fashion. As the British refused to cooperate with American naval wars in Bermuda, uh, Commonwealth Naval Command established an exclusion zone on the island. Ships identified as British have until now stopped peacefully and allowed search for military armaments. That's there's, there's been some grumbling in a few spats, but nothing terribly serious until now. Early this morning. We detected a British sub with the exclusion zone that failed to identify itself. As per protocol, American destroyers converged on the submarine and signaled it to the surface with low yield death charges. Rather than service, a sub fired on one of the destroyers and sunk it before fleeing the exclusion zone. This marks the first direct attack by British naval assets on American military, and as such, naval forces have abolished the exclusion zone, began directly targeting British naval forces around Bermuda. War is nearly upon us. So, at 100%, you will go to war. Interesting. The last minute's peace. Flashpoints. <clears throat> Continued to spark throughout the Empire this evening, British and American forces in New England faced off and came away more confusing than anything. Our part states that the British troops are spotted outside Epping, an area near the rebelling New England province, due to being directly marked as British soldiery. The rebellion approached with caution. Despite this caution, a fight ensued, which left at least one dead from her side, and possibly three more, to, uh, three to four on theirs, depending on who's being asked. Radio contact between the British and American forces in the region has ceased entirely since then. Neither either the British have changed their codes, or they're simply not interested in chit chat now. It's made it impossible to prevent conflict in the region, as no one's making efforts to coordinate. Shootouts are seemingly reported on the cross entire board, with both sides seemingly taking random pot shots at one another. Who shot first? The Imperials of War. Ah. The time for discussion has passed, and led to the provocation from Britain. The United Commonwealth Parliament voted in favor of a unilateral de declaration of independence. The vote came worryingly close to a tie, asking the first continent to Congress, but after some debate, an agreement was reached. As of today, the United Commonwealth has severed all ties with the British Empire and urged their associated Commonwealth to follow suit. Whether or not they do so is ultimately up to them. Naturally, Britain has rejected this declaration and countered that America is now a rebel nation. They say that the declaration violated the Imperial Constitution, that America's call for independence for other parts of the Empire violated international law. A diplomatic solution has become untenable. And the British Empire is now shutters in the wake of a global imperial civil war. America's to call you to war, death, the Red Coats. So now we're at war with them. And we have all our divisions over in there. Wow, our flag kind of sucks. Wow. Uh, we're definitely going to need more manpower for this. But, uh, yeah, there's not much else I want to do about this for now. Um, has not been victorious. Well, I think we'll save this civil war for later. So I think, well, the state of Kelly got really thick. Who the heck is Ned Kelly? Jack? Oh god, Jacobins. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, in the meantime, I think I'll go back, actually. Good little Republic of Texas. Oh, Tejas. Um, and redo this just a little bit. Um, uh, my plan, I suppose, is for us to finish this war first, maybe? We'll see. And then really fight the Imperial British, or I know that's, what, that's what's going to happen. I'll just put us in a good spot no matter what happens, so... I think we'll end up so there, though. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, as we'll see what we can do about fighting the League of Nations. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of <clears throat> your day.